Coming up on the program, we're going to be intercropping our potatoes with some great northern beans. And it's time for us to plant our acas in the ground. We'll tell you what these are and how they're supposed to grow. All that and more coming up today on the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener. The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener is sponsored in part by For all your non-GMO, heirloom, organic, vegetable, flowers, and herb seeds, visit dollarseed.com. Sioux Growing Supply, located in Wausau, Wisconsin, focusing on certified leaf compost, an excellent amendment for poor soil. With their new garden blend, improving soil structure in clay and sandy soil, great for creating new garden beds. Also available from Sioux, pre-filled trays and pots with professional potting soil mix or organic rice hull based potting soil mix. Bag and bulk of certified leaf compost also available. Visit SiouxGrowingSupply.com. Don't poison your soil with municipal water. Attach a body, mind, and soil hose and filter. Free shipping exclusively through the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com. Just click on the body, mind, and soil icon. Authentic Haven brand, soil conditioner for the home gardener. Easy to brew, 100% organic. Visit ManureTea.com. Rain Reserve. Reserving your rain, preserving our future. Rain Reserve, manufacturing of rainwater capturing capabilities. Visit rainreserve.com and use coupon code RAIN2016 to save 10% on your total purchase. Welcome to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener. I'm Joy Baird. We are in the large garden and we are utilizing as much square footage as we possibly can. Now I recently planted two rows of late potatoes and simply they I call them late because we were out of room in the garden until we removed the garlic and then we had space for the rest of the uh, potatoes that we gotten from Wood Prairie Farms. This is, this is some here, we got another uh, raised berm over there. So this would be the third raised berm. Now you can plant potatoes in a variety of different methods, styles and, and ways. What, we, what we're going to utilize is the center here. We've already healed them up prior to planting. We made hills or rows and we dug down about six inches, six, eight inches and planted the potato at the bottom of the hole fertilizing the whole thing. So that way most of the potatoes or all the potatoes will be underground and I won't have to hill. We did it similar over here but we didn't hill. So we're experimenting with processes here to see which works best and which is the minimal amount of work to get the most result out of. Well what this brings us to is this valley in the center of the potatoes. Now what we're going to do is intercrop and intercropping is simply a term used to describe the method of planting where you're planting two crops in the same area. More uh, familiar would be planting radishes in the mince, uh, middle of uh, spinach because radishes take 32 days or planting them in the middle of carrots or parsnips, a fast growing crop in amongst slowing growing crops. We're going to take concept and try it a little different. These potatoes will vary in harvest range from 90 to about 120 days. These are finger, finger links here and these are prairie blush here which are more of a mid uh, harvest potato. Great white northern beans are hard shell bean that will take about 90 to 95 days to dry on the pod. So what we're going to do is we're going to plant them down the center of the row. Now this may work, this may not. We've worked the bed. I shouldn't be standing in it because I'm compressing the, the soil there. Now if we need to come back and heal the potatoes more, if we see them emerging from the, uh, the rows that they're in, we can bring some certified, com uh, certified leaf compost in and mound around, do a little manual labor there in order to get that. But hopefully the plan is that the math is all done right. When the potatoes get done and ready to harvest, the beans will be done and harvest as well. This row is about 20 foot long. And if we plant the beans at a four inch spacing, approximately, I'm just doing some random math here, you should get, um, and you get enough beans on the pod, you need about uh, 1,200 to 1,600 beans to equal one pound of 
of the beans when you harvest. So we're going to take and maximize as much and plant them all here and see what we can get. So planting hard shell beans is no different than planting regular bush beans or green beans. All I'm going to do is make a row with my triangular hoe here. Now I'm also going to space these. I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to measure with a tape measure or anything, but I'm going to space them as close to four inches as I can. Now at the time of harvest, this is what the beans will look like, a white bean that we can use in soups and stews and uh, store them for winter use. So what I'm going to do, I don't need to have to, I don't need to add any fertilizer. I've worked the bed, I've weeded the bed, I've added coffee grounds to the bed prior to planting the potatoes as well as the beans are a legume and they will create their own nitrogen from the atmosphere so they will create the, the uh, energy that they need or the element that they need in order to be lush and green. So we're just going to drop these in here and then we'll come back and cover them over. All right, so I got the row all completed. I have extra, so I'm just gonna go in and split the difference just to utilize and maximize all the beans that I can. Now, this may, it could potentially hamper some of the, the growth, but I don't think it will. And now what we can do here, I'm gonna cover these up, is we're gonna water these in and we can use some dry grass clippings and dust on top of it in order to help retain some of the moisture. And since we've worked this bed very thoroughly with the garden fork, we should not have any, or we should have minimal um, amount of weeds. So these are only planted about a half inch deep. I'm gonna just bring the soil in off the edges a little bit. And as it rains, this will kind of more settle in and the beans will germinate here in about a week. But this is just another way in order to maximize a space that's kind of not being utilized. True enough, we might need the soil, but we've got soil we can import in. We can, uh, the, we've got compost we can put around the tomato or the potato plants if need be. But if you've got space like this, dead space, certainly look at the options that you have that you can plant, whether it be beans, Swiss chard, carrots, radishes, whatever the case is, utilize the intercropping and get two crops so we're in the in same spot our, as you normally would One of our raised one. beds here, and we're gonna create a Florida weave. We've got some late tomatoes going in. I'm gonna put 14 more tomatoes in this bed, but I've got to weed the bed to do that. Now, some people will say, well, you just go ahead and till it, plant your plants and be done with it. Well, that does work on paper. And what I mean by that is, okay, we'll till the ground up. It looks good, the weeds are all gone. Looks great, let's go ahead and plant. But what is occurring is you're taking roots, and I've got a perfect example with here, and we've talked about this on the program. Uh, wire grass, some kind of, I don't know what kind of grass this is. But what is happening is, and we've seen this a number of times, this, you go in there and you just rip the top of the plant off and you didn't get any roots, but hey, okay, the, it looks good, we can go ahead and plant. But underneath, you've got all of these roots. And when these get chopped up, even in, let's say, inch segments or smaller, within a matter of weeks, they will recreate and reproduce new, new growth and pierce through the soil. So now, right now we've got one plant we've removed from our bed. If we was to till, this would get chopped up into dozens of pieces and we would have scattered this among the bed. So you may think, okay, the garden looks good, I've tilled, and then in a couple of weeks you've got more weeds than ever before. Well, that's one of the main causes of that is whenever you're tilling. Now, we found using a garden fork and going through each bed works very well. Yes, it's time consuming, it's tedious. Some people say it's therapeutical. But by doing this, we're aerating the soil, we're removing all the roots that we can find. We're not chopping them up and dis distrib distributing them amongst the bed. Now, you will have weeds in any situation because of birds. You bring them in on your clothes, the wind brings them in but this will greatly reduce the amount of weeds that you're going to have in your garden. And we're, you only need to do this, you know, based on your situation, maybe once every year, two years, maybe three years, uh, you're getting that majority of weeds out and then it's very manageable afterwards. So just because you till and you think you've done a good job, that may be a, a reason why you're having so many more weeds in the garden because you keep breaking up those roots 
and distributing more and multiplying the plants, helping the plants, the weeds out, rather than helping your plants that you've planted out by removing them altogether. And weeds will compete with your corn, and I've got to weed this corn bed. They'll compete with your corn your tomatoes, your peppers, fill in the blank vegetable, and they're more aggressive and more vigorous, and they'll outcompete what you're trying to grow to eat. So we're gonna plant our acas now, or it's pronounced oka. So there, you know, it's a it's a plant that has come from the Andes Mountains. It's a tuber. And the story goes, if the Europeans would have took these over to Europe instead of what is now known as the current potato, these would be more popular than the current potato. So what the Aka does, it creates small tubers under the ground and you harvest them. These uh, you can plant no later than August. It's best to plant them as early as possible. And many people don't harvest them until December. Now we are in zone five. The acas are recommended to be grown no lower than zone nine. So what does that mean for us? It means a tremendous challenge, which means we are going to have to let these grow. And then at the time that it's starting to get cold, build a hoop house over it or some type of structure to keep it as warm as possible. These are from cultivariable.com is where we got the tubers from. These are just like Jerusalem artichokes, just like yacons, uh, just like potatoes. You can divide the root as long as there is enough material or, or meat or fruit on it to sustain the plant in order to get the top growth. The top growth is edible. You can utilize it very similar as you would uh, rhubarb. But again, if you start cutting back the top growth, you're going to limit the productivity of the tubers in the ground or below the ground level. So, so these will grow very good in poor soil. And fortunate enough for us, this is our last bed that we have available and it is our poorest bed we have available to grow these in. So what I'm gonna do, you can space them, it's recommended 15 inches apart, but we're gonna put them a little tighter because we've got uh, 14 of them and, or 15 of them and uh, we don't have that much space. So we're gonna put them a little closer together and this will also allow us to be able to house them as the temperatures get colder in the fall rather than having to have some very large type of structure. So we're just, and there's no really fertilizer requirements that is needed for these. I'm gonna remove this out of the container here. You can see they're very, they're getting to the point of root bound. So all I'm gonna do is just gonna, just like any other plant that's in a container, just loosen it up and we're going to plant, I'm going to get another one here so I can space it. There are, they do come in different, or they do result in different colored tubers. There's a variety of different colors. And if I'm correct, the color of the top will represent or resemble the tubers that it will form or should form if the conditions are correct. So I'm going to take, just loosen these up. Now I'm going to plant them at the same depth that they are in the container here. Very poor soil. We will mulch this, um, but I want to get these in the ground first, get them watered, and then we'll get the mulch to them. All right, set them in there. That's a little too deep back fill. All right, that's better. All right, so that's, they're very pretty looking plants. Uh, the color uh, is very, unique, very nice. They almost look like little four leaf clovers. So I'm going to get these planted and we'll talk a little bit more about the maintenance of these and uh, what we hope to get out of them. All right. <clears throat> All right. So I'm finishing the last two here. It doesn't look too bad. Breaking up the roots, back filling the soil level or the container level. Now this is very cloddy soil, but it breaks apart relatively nice. All right. Got our water running from a rain barrel. Now, again, these are gonna be a challenge. And what we may decide to do uh, is, we've got 14 plants here. We may choose and sacrifice a couple of them just for the foliage, for the top growth, to, because that's edible, because that's gonna hurt the tubers if we uh, harvest the top growth obviously because there's no sunlight getting to the roots. So we're going to mulch this and then we'll have to construct again some 
type of frame over it. So it's a unique crop to grow. They'll grow, you know, we have also yacons, which are a unique crop, but we're able to grow those successfully to a harvest, and we've done that last year, and we're uh, increasing our plants this year. So we're going to try this and see if it works as well. I think it's going to be a challenge, but it's a challenge that it's kind of exciting to try. So thanks for joining us. Join us again next time for more organic gardening and food preserving. I'm Joy Barrett, and this has been the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener. For more information, please visit thewisconsinvegetablegardener.com.